Hello, today I want to show you what parallax rendering for 2D games is and uh, also how I have implemented it in this game here and then at the end a tiny bit about the tools that I use to edit the parallax of objects within the levels. Uh, so parallax rendering is when you walk around in your game and objects in the background that are far away seem to be moving slower, for example the mountains in the background here are moving quite slowly and the dark trees that are also quite far back are also moving quite slowly and then the, the sort of more colorful trees here are moving faster. Parallax rendering gives your game additional depth. It sort of simulates, you know, a bird dimension for your 2D game, creating a feeling of that things are far away in the background. How have I implemented this parallax? So when I draw my world, all the entities in the world have a position. So this is the entity dot position. But then the entity also has a parallax value on it. So it says how much should this object parallax? And uh, then uh, you feed into this function called parallax offset. You feed the parallax number plus the midpoint of the camera in, in world coordinates. So it's the point in world coordinates of the middle of the camera, sort of somewhere here. And this function just takes the camera position times the parallax. So here we see the parallax is a float and the camera position is a two-dimensional vector. Then it just adds that offset to the entity's position. And that is the position that the object is actually rendered at. And we can now go and look a bit at the tools that are used to do this because, like I said, the entity has a parallax value and you need to edit that somehow. So if we jump into the editor here and hide these things, here's a, some kind of evergreen in the background and I can select it. And you see when I move around, uh, I can visualize this from within the editor, which is important. Like if you have a level editor, it's important to be able to visualize your parallax. Otherwise, it's very hard to place objects because you do, do not know where they will actually end up in the game since they, they will move around a bit. And on this tree you see it has a parallax number. This has 0 0.4. The mountains far in the background here are 0 0.8. The objects that are totally stationary have 0. What you do here is you assign objects a number between 0 and 1. If they are 1 then they will follow perfectly with the camera. And why is that? It's because this parallax offset function takes the camera position times the parallax. So if the parallax is 1, then it always adds the whole camera position to the entity, which will make it get offset by as much as the camera is offset from the origin of the world, which will make your object just follow. So we could do this, for example, with these clouds up here. We could set this to 1. And then you see it perfectly just follows constantly. It is also possible to put parallax values higher than one. The reason you would like sometimes a parallax value higher than one is in order to make foreground objects. Now, there are also some people do these things in different ways. Some people have layers where uh, everything, like they have parallax layers which you put graphics inside, and everything within that layer will uh, move at the same parallax speed. And there's lots of games with like a nice big forest where the forest is actually just a giant tiling texture that is repeated and that the whole thing is in a layer, a parallax layer that has an associate number. The reason I don't use a layer in this game and I assign things individually is because I have these individual objects and I want to play around with uh, assigning different parallax values to them. Now, uh, about the editor tools, so one, I said one thing, that it's important to visualize your parallax in the same way as in your game, so that things are actually parallaxing around. Otherwise, it's almost impossible to place things, because you will place it at one point, and then you start the game, and it has moved away. So this way, I see the same thing as I will see in the game, because things in the game will get offset by the camera position. So one thing you notice here is that since the parallax offset is the camera position times the parallax. When I change this number, uh, what normally would happen is that your object suddenly just f moves away very far. And because you change the number that you multiplied with the camera position, right? So what I do, whenever I change, whenever the parallax number gets changed, I can show you that code. Yeah, here it is. 
Uh, this is the this field here, this parallax field. This parallax field here is uh, made using this code. And this function, this is the function that re renders the field. When that one returns true, then it means the user pressed enter and sort of changed the field. And in that case, I fetch the middle point, midpoint of the camera and then I run this parallax offset function once with the old parallax and once with the new one we just assigned. And then I set the entity's position. So this part means that uh, it will move the entity's position to the position it would have uh, with the parallax uh, uh, offset added. Uh, so, you know, th this object would be here without parallax. Yeah. And then I subtract the new parallax offset so that when the object later gets parallax uh, offset again, it will end up here, but uh, given that it will use this new offset. And that way I can change the parallax offset without objects just flying away. They stay at the same position like this, which I think is uh, very important if you want to tweak these things. Just to summarize, when you draw your objects in the world, take the position, add a parallax offset. The parallax offset is simply the camera position times the parallax. And the parallax itself is just a float 30, like it's just a float number that uh, lives on your entity. And then in the editor, whenever you update the parallax, you can do this little trick to preserve the the perceived position of the object, but it actually changes the object's position, but just in such a way that it will, with the new parallax value, appear to be in that position. That's all I had for today, and I hope to see you in the next video, and uh, yeah, have a nice day.